This is a really needful message by Pastor Nathan Bemis called Reasons Why There Is a Hell. And you should listen to it. And when you listen to it, you need to think back, was there a time when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? It's so simple to be saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The gospel is so simple. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected. And all you had to do to be saved is realize you've sinned, realize you're a sinner. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and got up three days later. And all you do is come to Jesus as the sinner that you are and call on him. Just like the night I got saved, I said, Lord Jesus, I know you died on the cross for me. You were buried and resurrected, and I'm coming to you, and I want you to save me. And since then, I've been saved. You believe in your heart to salvation. So listen to this message. If you're already saved, maybe you can pass it along to somebody else. Um, put this on your channel. Give it out to your friends. Put it on the CD. Whatever you want to do, you know, everything on this channel is free, no copyright, use it freely. You don't even have to ask for permission. And just listen to the message, a very needful message on hell. He takes you to many verses. So I hope this message is a blessing to you. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Ezekiel. Turn to the book of Ezekiel and turn to Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. <clears throat> now the name of my message this morning is Reasons Why There's Got to Be a Hell. Reasons Why There's Got to Be a Hell. 
Now, Ezekiel chapter 20, and let's start reading with verse 45. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me. The me is Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy words toward the south, and prophesy against the forced of the south field. Underline the word the forced, the forced, the forced. I say to the forced. Now the reason why God put the word forced in there is because of the New Testament in Mark chapter 8. Take your Bible a minute and turn to Mark chapter 8. And in Mark chapter 8, let's pick up verse 24. In the Gospel of Mark, in Mark chapter 8, in uh, verse 24, it says this. <clears throat> it says, And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And this is the blind man that Jesus Christ is getting ready to heal. And it said he spit on his hands and put his hands on his eyes. And he said, can you see? And as he was bringing back his sight and his sight was partially back, the blind man says, I see men as what? As trees walking. Then men are like trees in the Bible. As you read through the Bible, it said some men are like palm trees. He said like a palm tree. Various places in the Bible it says men are like trees. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 47 it says, And say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, God, I will kindle a fire. What does a fire do to a forest? It'll burn it to the ground. A fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree, and the, underline it, flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces, underline that word, faces, men are like trees, and all faces from the south to the north shall burn therein, and all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, hath kindled it, and it shall not be quenched. Then it's a picture of hell. The passage here is God given a description of taking a fire and bringing a force fire and bringing a force fire down through a place and get a roaring forest fire that's just a rumble and a roaring down through the woods and burning everything that's before it, and it's a picture of hell. That's what it's a picture of. And God said in the passage, now verse 49, and said, ah, and said, I, ah, Lord God, they say to me, now underline it, doeth he not speak a parable? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless your word this morning. I pray you give me a clear mind, just clear my mind in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, just cleanse my heart in the blood of Jesus Christ this morning and fill me with the Holy Spirit. And Father, help me to preach thy word with plainness and clearness and power of the Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now notice in verse 49 it says, God is talking about some folks and said, now you know what they're going to say to you? They're going to tell you that you're speaking a parable. But he's not. He's telling the truth. You know what hell is? Hell is real. It's a real place and it's an actual thing that takes place and it's an actual fire. And you know some people say, well it's a parable. He's a parable. It's figurative. In symbolic of fire. No, it's real. It's real. Now this morning I want to preach on reasons why there's got to be a hell. Reason number one. Reason number one. You know why there's got to be a hell? Because the Bible says there's a hell. That's the reason why there's got to be a hell. Because God says there's a hell. Is there a hell? There's a hell because God said so. 
Now take your Bible and turn to some passages. Turn to Matthew chapter 5 this morning. I'm going to give you several verses on hell, and you may need to write these down. And uh, you need to write them down. A lot of folks don't know about hell. It's a very strange doctrine nowadays of hell. You know, in my library, I have at least a thousand books in my library, probably worth about uh, five to six thousand dollars. And you know how many books I got on hell? I haven't got more than five books on hell. You know why? Because you can't find them anywhere. You got to search and search and search and search, and they're hard to find books on hell. The preacher's not preaching on hell. They're not writing on hell. They're hard to find. I have illustrations books in my library. I must have 20 illustrations books. And you know how many illustrations are found on hell? I've got four books that don't have one illustration in them on hell. Not one. You know why? The preachers aren't preaching about hell anymore. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 5. And let's pick up verse 22. Now here's the Lord Jesus Christ in the middle of one of his great messages. And the Lord Jesus Christ talks about hellfire. You know where the word hellfire is, is actually began that? You know where the word is actually brought? Hellfire. You know who began that word? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ started that thing on hellfire. I mean, it's in the Old Testament. It's all over. But he's the one that started it. These preachers who pick up hellfire, they get it from the right man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22. And it says... But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rachel, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of what? Hell fire, man. That's what it is. You know what hell is? It's fire. It's fire. If you die and go to hell... You're going to burn. That's what's going to happen to you. All right, again, take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 8. And look at verse 12. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Here's another thing about hell. The first reason why there's got to be a hell, because the Bible says there's a hell. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus again says in verse 12, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be, what's going to be in hell? Weeping, weeping, and gnashing of teeth. You say, that's hell? That's what Jesus said hell was. That's what Jesus Christ said hell was. Now tell me something. If Jesus Christ said hell was weeping, then what is it? It's weeping. Balling and balling and balling and balling. Can't you imagine a multitude of people down in hell and every one of them weeping and crying and balling? That's what hell is, brother. That's what hell is. Uh, and gnashing of teeth. What's that gnashing of the teeth? Gnashing of the teeth, that's just grinding them teeth back and forth like that, just grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding teeth. That's what's going to happen in hell. Fellow says hell is just figurative. You'll find it at the real place. And some people are going to die and go there. You know what you better do? You better believe in hell. Fellas, they don't want to believe in hell anymore. People want to say, well, I want to believe in heaven. Heaven, yes, you tell me about heaven, preacher. That's what I love, heaven. Hey, man, there's another place and it's hell. You ever get somebody out there and say, uh, well, I'm going to heaven, but I don't want to go to that place. Say, or say, I'm going up, but I don't want to go to that place. Yeah, you know what? They stop using the word hell. Hell nowadays, you, use, you say hell and folks think you're cussing. Amen? You say hell and they say, man, I, I, oh, you use that word? Yeah, it's a Bible word. And I ain't cussing. You say, what is it? It's the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? A man's going to die and go to hell. He's going to burn and he's going to weep and wail and gnashing of teeth. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 19. The first reason why I know there's a hell is because the Bible says there's a hell. There's got to be a hell. If God said there's a hell, there's got to be one. Revelation chapter 19. Get Revelation chapter 19 in one hand and get Revelation chapter 20 in the other hand. Get two places. Revelation chapter 20 and Revelation chapter 19. Now let's read Revelation chapter 19. Let's pick up verse 20. And it says, And the beast was taken... And with him a false prophet, 
that worked miracles before him, and which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. Now watch it. These both, that's a false prophet and the beast, the Antichrist, these both were cast alive unto the lake of fire, burning with what? Brimstone. Now that comes a time at the great end of the great tribulation, God will take the Antichrist and he'll take the false prophet and he'll cast them into the lake of fire. Now take it a thousand years later, after the millennial reign of Christ, one thousand years later, Revelation chapter 20, and look at verse 10. Revelation 20, 10. Now notice again, verse 10 it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, that's what hell is, hell is fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet, what? Are. How long they been there? A thousand years. A thousand years. Then the Antichrist, who is a man, is been in hell one thousand years. Is he burned up? Is he annihilated? Is he taken out and burned up and annihilated and done away with? Absolutely not. He's a thousand years and he's going to spend a million years there. You get in hell, and you know some folks that died way back in Abraham's day, they've been in hell for over 4,000 years. You say they've been in hell how long? They're there now, and they're still there. They burn up? No. You say, preacher, how can the hell be right on? Because the body and the soul, they keep right on going. Even when the body's burned up, the soul keeps right on existing. Their soul's in hell. Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? His soul's what goes to hell. His soul goes there and burns. I right, again take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I know there's a Bible. I know there's a hell because the Bible says there's a hell. There's got to be a hell or the Bible is a lie. The Bible is a false book if there's no hell. Jesus Christ is a liar if there's no hell. You say, you believe what I said? I, you say, them are some strange words. They may be strange to your ears, brother, but Jesus Christ is a liar if there's no hell. He's the one that said there is. Why, who is he? Who's Jesus Christ? He's the God of the universe. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 43, 42. Matthew 13, 42. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 42 says, and shall cast them unto a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now what did he say it cast them to? Cast them to what? A furnace of fire. When God wanted to describe hell to you, what did he say? He said it's a furnace of fire. You want to get a good picture of hell, I'll tell you what you do. You go up to this anaconda plant up here and go up there and visit that plant. And go in there and go in to see one of those pots they have. They've got melting pots in there that they melt electricity. They melt with electricity. They melt out aluminum in there. And have some guy come along and bust that crust that's on the top of that thing. Got a crust. How thick is that thing, Bob? How thick is that crust? About that thick? About that thick is a crust on there about that thick. And it's hard on top. Well, you take that crust and you bust that crust off. And inside that big old pot or inside that big old furnace, that big old furnace, you know what it is? It's a furnace. You know what that thing is? It's molten metal and just thousands of degrees hot. You know what hell is? Hell's the same thing. Fire and molten. When Jesus Christ wanted to say, I want to tell you what hell is. Hell is like a furnace. A furnace. Just take that furnace and stoke it with wood and stoke it with wood and stoke it with wood or stoke it with coal and stoke it with coal or gas or electricity or whatever likes it, brother. You know what's going to burn in hell? Your soul is going to be the fuel for the fire. Your soul is going to be the fuel. You say what? Burning? Burning! You ever go set in a steam bath? Tell me you've ever sat in a steam bath. Ever go set in one, get in there and set in that steam bath and get in there and that thing just 
turn that thing up real hot, and then all that sweat starts to roll off you, and sits in there and gets out about 110 degrees or 120 degrees, and the sweat just rolls off you, and you sit in that thing, and you think, uh, I can hack it another minute or two. And then you get an eye and you hack another minute or two, and then you get to a certain spot right in there where you just you start to breathe pretty good, and then you say, and I've had enough of this. Amen? And you get up and you grab a hold of that door and you walk out. Suppose you sit in that thing and sit in that thing and you say, and I've had enough of this, and you get up and go over to open that door, and the door's locked and you can't get out. You know what you do? You would panic. You would panic. You'd be gabbing that. You'd shake that door. And you'd kick that door. And you'd run into that door. And you'd kick that door. And you'd scream a holler and yell. And then you would go into. If you stayed there very long, you know what you'd do? You'd pop. That mind go. A man gets out into hell and the sweat starts to roll and the fire is coming up and around him. He'd say, "This is just purgatory." This is just purgatory. This is just purgatory. I always believed in purgatory. I always knew it was a plural place. I've always believed in purgatory. I just knew I'd make it. I just figured I would. Got to be a purgatory. It's, just, it's got to be here. That's where I am. I'll get out pretty soon. There must be somebody praying for me. There must be somebody. Oh, no, I know mom is praying for me. I'll get out of there. And after you've been in there for 10,000 years, you would say, I'm in hell. There's no such place as purgatory. I'm in hell. You know what you do? You'd snap. You go mad. You know what hell is? Hell's a madhouse. I mean, buddy, there is crazy. Bunch of crazy people. People say, I'm going to go down to hell and have a good time. You're going to be so busy burning, you ain't going to have a good time. Fellow said, I want to go to hell where all my friends are. Every man in hell, I hate your guts and you'll hate them. You see, going to hell with all your friends. Nobody be your friend in hell, and you won't be anybody else's friend. You'll hate them, and they'll hate you. You see, I'm going to hell and have a good time with my friends. You know what it'd be? Hatred. No love in hell. It's hate. No joy in hell. It's, it's pain and sorrow. People don't believe in hell. That's because you don't believe the Bible. You don't believe the Bible. Jesus Christ speaks of hell. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 13 and look at verse 50. Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 50. And it shall cast them into the furnace of fire. What did he say? He said it's a furnace of fire. If it's a furnace of fire, brother, it's a furnace of fire. Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 20, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 8. Let's see Jesus Christ again. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 8. You know something, if I had my way, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> I was going to interrupt myself, but I won't. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 8. It says, Wherefore, if thy hand of uh, offend thee, cut it off, and if thou uh, uh, cast it from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life, halt or mean, rather than having two hands or two feet, to be cast into everlasting fire. Now how many of you this morning have everlasting life? He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How many of you got everlasting life this morning? All right. Uh, what did it say was going to be in hell? What kind of life? Hey, I've got everlasting life. How long is that going to last? Forever. If he's got everlasting fire, how long is that going to last? Just as long as my everlasting life does. I'm going to live forever. So is he. We're just going to be in two different places. Amen. Amen. Just be two. He's got everlasting fire. I've got everlasting life. He's going to be in hell forever. I'm going to be in heaven forever. It's the same word. Same word. John 3, 16. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Identical word. Right straight across the line. Same word. Same word. All right. I take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. 
Matthew 25, 41, and it says, Then shall he say, and, uh, say also unto them that are on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed, unto everlasting fire. Just like a Christian has everlasting life. Everlasting fire. Same word. Prepared for the devil and his angels. What? The hell is not made for people. Hell's not made for people. Hell's made for the devil and his angels. But I'll tell you something, there's going to be a whole lot of people go. This whole world, this world is full of people. Bible says hell enlarges herself every day. Every day. But it's made for the devil and his angels. Alright, uh, take your Bible and uh, turn to the book of Ezekiel. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 32 and I'll show you why the devil wants you to go to hell. Uh, God even tells the uh, people why the why uh, the devil wants you to go there. Turn to Ezekiel chapter thirty-two. Ezekiel chapter thirty-two. And Ezekiel chapter thirty-two. <clears throat> and Ezekiel chapter thirty-two. Let's pick up. Let me show you some things down through the passage. Pick up verse uh, 18, Ezekiel 32, 18, and notice in the last part of the verse, notice the last four words that say, down into the pit. Underline that. Down into the pit. Notice the last word in verse 19, uncircumcised. So the Old Testament, they're not saved. They shall fall into the midst of them that are slain by the sword. Underline that in verse uh, 20. Slain by the sword. Notice in verse 21. And a strange among the mighty, the st a strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of, what's that word? Hell. Hell. Underline it and circle it and put a mark in the margin. Hell. So the passage you're reading, when it says the pit, as verse 23 says, the pit slain by the sword, it's talking about hell. That's what it's talking about. Uh, verse 24, the last three words in verse 24 says go down into the pit. That's what hell is referred to. Uh, verse 25, uncircumcised, so they're unsaved people, uncircumcised. Verse 25 again, down into the pit. Uh, verse 26, slain by the sword. Verse 27, and they shall not lay with the mighty that are fallen in the uncircumcised, which are gone down to what? In verse 27, hell. You got it two times, and every other time it says down into the pit, down into the pit, down into the pit. What is it? It's hell. Now let's pick up the passage in verse 32 talking about the devil himself. Ezekiel chapter 32 verse 31. Now let's read it. Verse 31. Pharaoh shall go, shall see them and shall be comforted over all his multitudes. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, saith the Lord God. Why, you know when he says Pharaoh there, he talking about the devil. He talking about Satan in the passage. And he says Satan, that's what he's called. The devil is called Pharaoh. He's also called uh, the cherub. He's also called... Uh, He's called many things in the passage. He's called the Prince of Persia in the Old Testament. Has many names. Devil has more than one name. All right, sit and underline it in verse 31. Shall be comforted. Now verse 32. For I have caused many terrors in the land of the living, and he shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain with the sword, even fell, and all... His what? Multitude. You know how many people are going to be in hell? Multitudes of people are going to be in hell. Hell is just going to be plumb full of people. You know what people say? Say the same thing the devil says. 
shall be comforted. You know what they say? You talk an unsaved man, you say, well, I'm going to go to hell where all my friends are. How many of you ever heard that one? Yeah, you all heard that one. Everybody, Everybody's heard that one. I'm going to go to hell where all my friends are and I won't be alone. I won't be the only one there. Well, I'll tell you something. That's not very much comfort. That's not very much comfort. You say you won't be alone. That's why the devil wants to damn you. Why, well, look at here. The devil can't change God's plan. God is going to put up a new heaven and a new earth, and he's going to populate the new heavens and the new earth, and the devil is going to go to the lake of fire. You think the devil can ever get out of it? God said the devil is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Said that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. It's in his book. Amen? Amen. Can the devil get out of that? Can the devil get out of that? Is there any possible way? Why, what makes the devil keep on going? What makes the devil keep on damning people and damning them and damning them and damning them and damning them? Why does the devil do that? Doesn't want to be alone. Doesn't want to be alone. Want to have somebody with him. Going to be saying, I'm going to go to hell, but I'm going to take somebody with me. Going to take somebody with him. Well, I'm going to heaven, and I want to take somebody with me. Amen? All right, take your Bible again. The reason why I know there's got to be a hell. Take your Bible because the Bible says so. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. 1 Peter 3, 19. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. In 1st, I mean, 1 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse 19. And it says, By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in what? In prison. In prison. In prison. Underline it and circle it. In prison. You know what hell is like? Hell is like a prison. Hell is like a prison. You ever been in prison? You ever been that? Now, nowadays, what they do is they make it a pretty nice place to be. But I'll tell you something. You get in prison, and then the warden come along and tell you you're never going to get out. Never! And you say never, never get out. You know something? You had to change. You say, then, you know, then a guy comes along, you just cut his throat. Wouldn't pay no attention, just cut the guy's throat and go on. Say, I'm never getting out anyway, just kill him. Don't mess with me, I'll kill you. Say, what do you mean? You'll have to stay the rest of your life in prison. I'm already spending the rest of my life in prison. So you don't mess with him. You know what you do when you go visit a prison? You ask the guy if you can talk to him. I've been to prison. You walk by down through there and you go in, the, in this jail up here. You know what you do? You know how I deal in that jail? I go by that jail and I go up to the cell and I say, can I talk to you a minute? I say, well, wait a minute, preacher. They're behind the bars and you're out here. And you can talk to them all you want. No, you don't. You walk up and say, can I talk to you? You ask him, can I talk to you a minute? And that guy says, yeah, I'll talk to you. He say, yeah. He says, what for? Man, when you get in prison and you get in prison and you get in there, that's a hell hole. You know what we've done nowadays? Nowadays we've made, uh, made our prisons a pretty good, nice place to stay for a while. A little bit of good about them. I mean, you could have them worse. Will you ever get to a jail down in South America? Get a prison in South America or a prison in some of them foreign countries? They feed you slop and boy, I'll tell you, they feed them terrible. You get in a foreign prison, it's re really enough. You know what I think prison ought to be? I think prison ought to be like hell. You say, why? Because that's what Jesus said it is. Said it's hell. It's a little bit of hell. Amen? A little bit of hell in prison. You get in there and this don't go right and that don't go right and this don't go right and that don't go right. You don't get this and you don't get that and you don't get this. When they put those windows in this jail up here, you know what I thought to myself? That makes that jail just worse. Because then they can look out the window and see all the cars go by. You see, now I wish I was out there on the free side. And see the sunshine. They don't like, they don't mind the bad days. But boy, you get a good sunshiny day, man, with the grass is nice and green. And look out there and see everybody go by. Then it just makes hell worse. You know when a man gets in hell, he'll be in hell forever. There's no getting out of it. It's like a prison. 
All right, number two, why there's got to be a hell. There's got to be a hell because it wouldn't make sense. This life wouldn't make sense if there's not a hell. If there's no hell, life wouldn't make sense. There's got to be a hell or it wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair if there's no hell. It's logical if there's hell. You say, how do you figure that? Look at here. Here's a man who doesn't cuss, doesn't steal, doesn't commit adultery, doesn't murder, lives a good pure life all his life. And he goes the same place that this fellow over here that cusses and swears and lives like a devil and lives a wicked life. You say it's got to be fair. Hey man, if that guy out there that rapes and murders and lies and steals, and here I am, I'm saved and born again, believe the Bible and trust in Jesus Christ, and we're going to go to the same place? Do you think that's fair? Do you think it's fair that I should believe in Jesus Christ and trust in his blood and believe the Bible and I don't cuss and I don't drink and I don't swear and I try my best to do right? Do you mean to tell me that he should go to the same place that I'm going? Do you think that's fair? It ain't fair. It ain't a bit fair. Tell me something. There's a little girl over here that's retarded. And she went out here in the middle of the night. She come over to my house. Knocked on the door and she retarded. She knocked on the door and in the middle of midnight in the night. She said, uh, your dog scared me. She's retarded. She's mentally retarded. She's about maybe three or four years old. She's probably about 15 or 16 years old. But she's mentally retarded. You say, what is it? I don't know what it is. That little girl was around here on the street at midnight and somebody raped her. What do you think your daddy felt like? Huh? What do you think mama felt like? Huh? There's got to be a hell for people like that. Tell me there's no hell. Got to be one. Got to be one. You say, preacher, that guy ought to be shot. Nobody knows who it was. Nobody can find him. Nobody has any idea who it was. They can't find him. They don't have any idea who the guy was. They can't even begin. The little girl can't even tell them. The little girl hang up brains enough to tell them who it was. Didn't know who it was. Didn't even know, hardly know what went on. You say, hey, who, can she identify somebody? She can't have didn't know anybody. The little girl's half to retarded. But I know somebody who knows who did it. Say, so who's that? The Lord. Is a guy going to go to hell? If he don't get saved, he'll burn in hell for it. Got to be a hell. Hell's got to be logical. This life ain't fair if there's not. Here's a guy who goes out there. He gets all kinds of money by selling dope to kids and sells dope to kids and sells dope to kids and he gets money and gets money and gets him a big house and gets him a big car and all these kids become nothing but a bunch of junkies and it wrecks their life the rest of their life on junkies and it ruins them. And he sits back and rolls in all the coins. Say, oh, I got a bunch of suckers. Is it fair? Tell me something. Is it fair? You say, oh, we're all going to the same place. You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. There's got to be a day of restitution. There's got to be a day of turn back. There's got to be a time that God, if there's a God in the universe anywhere, there's got to be a time of retribution be made. Life don't make sense if there's not. Don't even make sense. When it goes through life, I mean, it's crazy. Life, it didn't have any meaning. I'll tell you something. I can answer a hundred million things in this life by one word. Hell! I can answer them a whole bunch of things, man. They have retribution coming. Now take your Bible a minute and turn to first uh, Second Thessalonians chapter one. Second Thessalonians chapter one. In Second Thessalonians chapter one, I want you to notice in Second Thessalonians chapter one, look at verse eight. And it says, Second Thessalonians one eight says, In flaming fire. That's what hell is. In flaming fire. Taking what? 
Vengeance! The Bible says, Jesus, says over in the Old Testament, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. God is going to pay a man for his sins and he's going to put him in hell and the payment is going to be eternal. All right? Uh, vengeance on them that know not God. Underline it. Know not God. That's the problem. You're not saved. You don't know Jesus Christ. Know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To obey the gospel is to believe it. Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? Why, brother, what do you mean everlasting? It, it's not annihilation, it's destruction. And it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. It lasts forever. Lasts forever. Notice it said, shall be what? What? Punished. Punished. You know what hell is? Hell is a place of punishment. That's what's going to happen. You say punished for what? Punished for coming to this life and not believing in God and not believing in Jesus Christ and not believing in the Bible and doing what he wants to do. You know what God's going to do? God's going to say, I'm going to punish you for it. You say, what is it? Hell. Hell, that's what it is. Uh, take your Bible and... Uh, Take your Bible and turn to the uh, uh, book of Romans chapter 12. I'll show you something about how a lot of people have never seen. Romans chapter 12 and look at verse 20. Romans chapter 12 and verse 20 says, Romans 12, 20 says, Therefore if thy enemy hunger and feed him, and if he thirst give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. You know what happens if you help out a man and you help him out and you, you help him out and try to help him get saved and try to do right by him and then give him uh, food and give him uh, water and help the man out. If the man rejects God and rejects Jesus Christ, you know what God's going to do? God's going to put him in hell. You know what he's going to get when he gets in hell? A devil or a demon's going to come along and grab him a coal full of, of hot coals and run over there and he's going to be sitting there and he's going to take that shovel full of hot coals and he's going to throw it on his head. Say, preacher, you believe what you read? I believe exactly what I read. You say, but preacher, that's figurative. That's symbolical. Then turn to Proverbs chapter 25 and look at verse 21. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 21. Proverbs chapter 25. There's nothing symbolical or figurative about hell. Proverbs chapter uh, 25 and verse 21 says, And if thy enemy hunger, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. There it is again. You say heap coals of fire upon his head. Yeah, where in hell. In hell. People say, what is hell like? Hell is a place where you're chained up. Uh, there are chains in hell. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 14. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse uh, 4 rather. Second Peter 2 4. Uh, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 it says, chains, chains. Man's going to have chains on his feet, chains on his hands, and he's going to have coals of fire on his head, and he's going to be burning, burning. That's what hell is. You know, I come, I know there's a hell. There's a hell because the Bible says there's a hell. There's a hell because it makes good sense. Life doesn't make sense. It wouldn't be fair if there's no hell. Number reason. Uh, reason number three. Because God is holy. Reason number three. Because God is holy. You know why there's a hell? Because if there's, a lot of people say, well, God is too loving to put his children in hell. God's too loving to put his children in hell. You're right. You're absolutely right. Am I God's child? Is he going to put me in hell? Never. Not on your life. God's too loving to put his children in hell. But you know something? There's a whole lot of people that are not his children. 
If you've never been saved, you're not his child. In hell? I wouldn't. I wouldn't put anybody's children in hell. I wouldn't put my children in hell, and I wouldn't put anybody else's children in hell. He said, you better than God? I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. God's holy. God's holy. You know the difference between me and God? I'm full of sin up to here. And so are you. God has no sin on him. He doesn't even think sin. He's so holy that no sin will come in his presence. God is holy. Now God said a man has to be put into hell for rejecting his son Jesus Christ. If that's not true and it lets all those people go to heaven that deserve to go to hell and they reject his son Jesus Christ, and he lets them all go to heaven even after they rejected his son, I'm going to stand up and say, God, you're a liar. You said that you'd put him in hell. But you know something? God said he'd put him in hell when they reject his son. God's got to. He's got to. He has no choice. He would deny his own holiness. He would become a liar. He would become a sinner. God has to put you in hell. If you reject his son, Jesus Christ. That brings to me to this point. If Jesus Christ died for my sins, and there's no if about it, because I believe he did, amen? And he was crucified 2,000 years ago and died on the cross. That's what my Bible says. And I know the great change in my heart and life and soul that's taken place. I believe it's real. My friend, you can receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and stay out of hell if you'll trust in Jesus Christ's death on the cross of Calvary and if you'll turn from your sins and accept Him. The question is, do you know that you're a sinner going to hell and will you turn from your sins and receive Him as your Savior before it's too late? All eyes closed and all heads bowed and Christians praying this morning. Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says the just for the unjust. The Bible says that we might have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed in the cross of Calvary. If you never have, if you never have, your sins are taking you to hell. You're going to die, and you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn. But you don't have to go. Jesus Christ has made a way out. And the way out is to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior now before it's too late. Trust in Him as your Savior. Oh, don't go to hell. Go to heaven and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Maybe there's some Christians here this morning who say, Preacher, I know some people that are lost and they're dying and they're going to hell. Maybe you know of a mother of or a brother that's lost and they're dying and they're going to go to hell. They're going to burn. Your sister's going to burn. Your brother's going to burn. They're going to burn in hell unless they get saved. They've got to get saved. They must get saved. Will you preach them the gospel? Will you give them the gospel? Will you give them the truth of Jesus Christ? All the Christians would see the reality of hell this morning. Every eye closed and every head bowed. And Christians praying this evening. Is there somebody this morning that's a preacher? I've never been saved. I don't believe that I'm really saved. I don't believe I am. But I'd like to be. Would you pray for me? Will you raise your hand this morning? Say, preacher, I don't believe I'm really saved. Pray for me. I'd like to be. I'd like to know that I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Would you raise your hand this morning? Is anybody at all out of way this morning? Just put your hand right up and put it right back down. Is there a Christian here this morning that said, preacher, I'm saved. I know Jesus is my Savior. But I have some loved ones, a brother or a sister or a mother that's lost. And would you pray with me that they would get saved? Would you raise your hand? Amen. 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 Some of you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, every one of these Christians this morning that have an unsaved loved one, a brother or sister or mother or father, Lord, I pray you'd speak to their hearts this morning. And Lord, wherever they may be this day, maybe they're far away in another state or another land somewhere. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to their heart and send them a bold witness, somebody that will boldly come to them and tell them about your son, Jesus Christ. 
Lord, send my mother somebody that will show her that she's lost and going to hell from the scripture and who will witness to her and speak to her about her soul salvation, Father. And Lord, my mother's far away, but Lord, help me to speak to somebody else's mother right here. And Lord, help me to speak to somebody else's father right here and talk to him about Jesus Christ and about being saved. Lord, help us to see the truth of your holy scriptures that men are dying and going to hell without Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take your hymnal. Page 17 in hymnal. Page 17. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Out of I am not Holy and great, I have to All eyes closed and all heads bowed in Christian stand this morning. Now, Christian, you need to make a commitment to go and speak to somebody this week about their soul's salvation. They may die. And step out into an eternal lake of fire. Step out into hell. Hell is real. Go speak to them. Sit down and write them a letter. And speak to them about Jesus Christ. Say something to them. And try and win them to Jesus Christ. Do your best. And say, oh Lord, help me to speak to them. And tell them about Jesus Christ. And about his death on the cross of Calvary. Speak to them this week, Christian. And try and win them. Try and do your best. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, as you continue this year service, maybe there's a Christian here that, that has sin in their life, and they need to commit their lives to Thee, Father. And maybe that's keeping them from winning anybody to Jesus Christ. Lord, we all deserve to go to hell, but Lord, thank You for saving us this morning. Lord, those that are saved, I know they're thankful that you're saved this morning. Lord, and maybe there's a backslidden Christian here this morning needs to get their heart right with Thee, Father. I pray that You'd speak to their heart and speak to their mind and speak to their soul. And Lord, may they get their soul right with Thee, Father, before they step into eternity. Maybe there's a Christian here and there's something you need to do. Maybe you come down, need to come down to the altar. Maybe you need to pour your heart out to God. Maybe you need to follow the Lord in baptism. Maybe you've never been baptized since you've been saved. Maybe you ought to come as we sing this next stanza. If God spoke to your heart, you come as we sing. Thy only Lord, have thy own way. Thou art the end of the day. Mr. Hill, I do the next to all the Lord. All heads bowed in Christian prayer this morning. Now, right now, this morning, God speaks to your heart. You need to make some decisions. You need to make them this morning. You need to make them this morning. God spoke to your heart, Christian. You need to make the decision that needs to be made. Maybe you need to just come and join the Bible Baptist Church. You're not a member of the Bible Baptist Church. Maybe you need to come. As we sing your sex and maybe you'll become a member of the Bible Baptist Church. You want to join. You step out and come. As we sing this sex and you come. And I will be Brother Vern Bunyan, will you ask the Lord to close our service in a word of prayer, please?